just let me do a quick pulse check. First, raise your hand if you have a new venture you'd like to launch. Go ahead and raise your hand if you have already launched your venture and just here to sharpen the way that you frame it. And raise your hand if you have no idea about what venture you'd like to launch. That's fine. For the purposes of this workshop, however, I want you to seize this opportunity to think about if you could launch any venture possible, what would it be? So at least have something in your mind because we need a frame of reference. So I want you to turn to the page that has those numbers on the left-hand column. So we're going to use this as sort of the frame for the entire workshop tonight. So there are going to be five, at least five key learnings you're going to walk away from this workshop with tonight. So in the one column, I'd like you to write your focal point for this evening. So identify which venture will you focus on during this seminar. Which venture will you focus on during this seminar? This has to be a few key words, the name of the venture, something to anchor your thoughts. So let's start with a working definition of what an entrepreneur is, just so we're all on the same page. Um, someone who manages an honest enterprise, usually with considerable drive and risk. And of course, this seminar is grounded in the assumption that successful entrepreneurs have effective communication skills. And this seminar, again, is grounded in the framework that Communication is important to being a successful entrepreneur. Effective communication skills can help you brand yourself and bolster your credibility. So who are you, what are you about, and why are you credible to start this particular venture? You can help you pitch your ideas with clarity and confidence to important stakeholders. And it can help you spin your ideas so they stick in a very crowded and competitive marketplace. This is just sort of skimming the surface of material that I cover in a course called management communication as well as communication for entrepreneurs. You received handouts, I believe, about those two courses. Um, communication for entrepreneurs for those who are still enrolled in the MBA program. You can sign up for that. It should be offered in the spring semester. But it's limited because it's so interactive to 25 students. So this is sort of a snippet of what's covered in that class. So the first thing I want you to do is find someone you do not know, so it could not be someone you chatted with before we started the workshop and introduce yourself and decide who will be partner A and partner B. So everyone can only have one partner. So go ahead and do that now. So you should be ready to pitch your venture at a moment's notice. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to pitch your venture. So we're going to take one with your pitch. So partner A, um, who's partner A? Raise your hand. Partner A, you're going to pitch your new venture to partner B who will play the role of a venture capitalist. So imagine you ran into this person on the elevator as partner A, and you get to pitch your venture. They're going to invest a million dollars in your idea. So you have 60 seconds to pitch partner B on your venture. Ready, set, go. Yeah. Now, partner B, partner B will tell partner A one thing they did well and one thing they could do differently. One thing they did well, and one thing they could do differently. You have 60 seconds. Now we're going to reverse roles. Partner B will pitch their new venture to partner A, who will play the role of the venture capitalist. Time limit 60 seconds, starting now. Now partner A will tell partner B one thing they did well, and one thing they could do differently. Time limit 60 seconds. Hopefully you receive feedback in terms of what you did well but also you receive feedback as to what you could do to polish your pitch. But don't worry, you're gonna have several opportunities to re-pitch your pitch this evening. So tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn some core strategies, some foundational strategies to improve your pitch. And we're gonna focus on two areas. First, the substance of your pitch, how to make it clear, concise, and compelling. And second, to uh, sharpen your style in terms of the way you deliver your pitch. But first we're gonna focus on the substance of your pitch. We're going to follow the three C's, and that's to be clear, concise, and compelling. I was eavesdropping, and I noticed that some folks took a while to get to what the core message was about their pitch. So not necessarily concise, and also clear. Was it absolutely clear about what the person was pitching, what their ideas were? And compelling. How compelling were the ideas? Did you want to invest? So move on to step two on the worksheet. 
step two. And I want you to work with your partner for step two to describe your venture in one sentence. And the maximum number of words that you get, 15. It can go, not go over 15. It cannot be 16, 17. It can be less than 15, however. So you have two minutes to help each other write about your venture in one sentence. So two minutes, two minutes begins now. How did the sentences turn out? Turn out pretty well? I'm going to hear some of them. Who wants to read their sentence to this small little intimate group we have here? And silence. Great. All right. Go ahead and introduce yourself. And it's sort of like a talk show, right? So go ahead and introduce yourself and read your sentence to the group. And what I want the group to do is See if this sentence adheres to the three C's. Is it clear? Is it concise? Is it compelling? So, Carlos? Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. Um, my sentence is, uh, I provide turnkey online community management for small businesses by providing copy, content, and marketing strategies. What do we think? Nothing. Is it clear? Nothing. In the, okay, now, now, now we're getting to what I call the kind <laughs> it means nothing. Those are all pronouns. I like I'm I'm for everything good and I'm completely against anything bad. Okay? So you want a little bit more substance to get this in. What is he doing? Alright, so from one perspective, it wasn't entirely clear. Okay? So what could he do to what could Carlos do to improve his one sentence? Um, what is the product? What why What's your differentiation? How deep do you understand the problems of this, this industry? You know, what's wrong with this industry? In other words, <laughs> the, the most clear, concise thing you do is define the problem and define your solution. Okay, so read the sentence one more time. Sure. Turnkey online community management for small businesses providing copy, content, and marketing strategies. What problem are you solving? Okay, so that's one question. What else? Okay, so it's not really resonating with the audience. Okay, so that's one sample sentence. Let me get another volunteer to read their sentence. That's okay, there's room for improvement. I need a brave volunteer to read their sentence. All right, back here. What's your name? Rabia. Rabia? Yes. All right. My sentence is to provide a green service for the event industry through reuse of materials. Is it clear? I knew exactly what she was talking about. Is it concise? She's forced to be concise with 15 words. Is it compelling? No. Oh, wow. <laughs> he says no. What do we think? What do we think over here? Compelling or not? Not really. Okay, all right. So now we have another advocate here. So why would you say not really? Uh, because um, I, I know the service you want to provide, but the entity of the industry is so wide. So it's like, okay, I'm going to supply the entire world. Or are you focused on a particular niche? So I guess if you kind of highlight the niche, okay, I'm focused on here in the fashion, like in New York, or or if you have a number around the size of the market that you are focused on, then that would help. But as it stands now, it's not. It seems like something that somebody else is thinking. So you want some more parameters on it? Yeah. Okay. Some more par 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 Another sentence. Hi, Hi. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> an online, oh, an, an online, <clears throat> an online shopping search engine promoting cultural products of the South Bronx. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. You know exactly what Hillary's talking about. Is it concise? Yes, because of the fifteen word limit. Is it compelling? So I'm getting the sense that the whole compelling factor is the area for improvement. So let me give you a few more suggestions in terms of writing your sentences. First, don't make it about you. And those that we've heard from so far didn't really, but I don't know if you tailored it to your target audience. It's got to be all about them. So focus why others should care about your specific venture. We're very selfish people. We don't really care what's in it for you. We care what's in it for us. When you go to a department store, when you go to Macy's and you're buying something, they don't say, if you buy this, I'm going to get a commission. 
No, it's all about here are the benefits, here are the features of this product, here's how it's going to help you. So how will your venture help others? Third, make it come alive. And I, if you look at the flip side of that five number sheet, there are a series of buzzwords. I think there's about 90 there. And it's from a book that analyzed mission statements from top companies. And these were the most frequently used words in Fortune 500 companies' mission statements. So it might be a nice idea to sort of pepper your positioning statements with these words. And fourth, playing to people's emotions. Pathos, way back during Aristotle's time, is a very powerful persuasion tool. So tug at people's heartstrings. Even if the venture is about making money, still play into people's emotions. So let's take two with these positioning statements. And what I want you to do is find a new partner and introduce yourself. So say goodbye to your colleague, your new contact, and find a new partner. So what you're going to do is you're going to work with your partner to revise your sentence. And you have four minutes to do this. And I want you to make it clear, concise, and compelling. And I want you to adhere to these four criteria. Don't make it about you. Let others know why they should care. Make it come alive using those buzzwords on the flip side of the sheet. And play into people's emotions. Use pathos. We're moving on, and we're going to continue refining your pitch. And again, we're trying to make it clear, concise, and compelling. So this sentence that you just created should really ideally be the first sentence that comes out of your mouth when you're riding that elevator and you run into that venture capitalist and they want to invest a million in your venture and then you want to come up with a tagline what's a tagline That's all folks. right I hear some samples I hear it's identifying a brand an idea behind an organization a venture so it's time to come up with a tagline for your venture. And some of you who sort of progressed along already have a tagline for your venture. And there are really two types of taglines you can create for your venture. First is descriptive. And it communicates basically the purpose of your business. An example is the official sponsor of birthdays by the American Lung Association. And the other type is expressive. And it communicates the essence and personality of your business. A popular example is Just Do It by Nike. So first, I want you to figure out which one is appropriate for your venture. Descriptive or expressive? What's the personality of your venture? And then what you're going to do is you're moving on to step three on your sheet. And you're working with the partner you currently have to create a tagline for your venture. And you only have two minutes to do this for both of your ventures. So I'm really curious. I want to hear some of your taglines. Who wants to share their tagline with us? Karen, what's your tagline? You had it beforehand. Can you afford not to be seen? What do you think Karen's venture is? Can you afford not to be seen? Say it one more time. What? An ad? An advertising business? Glasses? Mirrors? Mirrors? Getting yourself out there. Maybe like a consulting business? PR? Network? I was thinking medical or healthcare. It's medical or healthcare? It's reflective products that go on medical devices. Gotcha. All right, another one. Another tagline. Yes? Everyone's striving for it. Now you can drink it. Everyone's striving for it? Now you can drink it. Now you can drink it. What is that? An energy drink? What is it? Is it legal? <laughs> Great. Other taglines. Listen to what you want. Listen to what you want. What do you think the venture is? Listen to what you want. Hearing aids? Hearing aids? <laughs> <laughs> very, very basic here. Music? Music? Two more guesses. What do you think? Music? Any other guesses? What is it? Streaming. Streaming. Great. Have you heard of it? Okay. Oh, uh, two more. Two more taglines. Express yourself. Express yourself. And what do you think is the venture? Uh, communication. 
Communication, maybe communication consulting. What do you think, Kim? All right. Oh, we're going to get to Kim. All right. Say it one more time. Express yourself. What do you think the venture is? Madonna. <laughs> self promotion. Madonna, self promotion. What is the venture? Jewelry design. Um, that you sell your own jewelry or you teach people how to design jewelry? That you teach people how to design jewelry. Very interesting ventures going on. And last but not least, Kim, what's, your, what's the tagline? Your end, your way. Your end, your way. What's the venture? No idea. Your end, E N D. Your end, your way. What do you think the venture is? <laughs> Any guesses? What can you do? A funeral pile. A mortician. We have a guess over there. I saw yes. it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and on a less summer note, please tell me it's not assisted suicide. You know, part of them. What is it? End of life event management. Really intriguing. Really intriguing. So you start with your first sentence, and to sum it up, you end with your tagline. So it's sort of a memorable close. It's that sort of button that you put at the end of a pitch. So first we focused on substance. What are you going to say when you run into that critical stakeholder who needs to invest in your business, who needs to join your business, that needs to help you make your business fly and succeed? And now we're going to focus on style. What do you look like when you say your pitch? So find a new partner and introduce yourself. What's the networking tonight? And go ahead and answer the question on this, the slide, and you have 60 seconds to do it. What entrepreneurs were discussed? Who did you choose? You didn't choose? Who did you choose? I chose Richard Branson. Richard Branson? And tell us what uh, business Richard Branson started. And what entrepreneur did you choose? You chose Richard Branson as well. Magic Johnson. Other entrepreneurs. Warren Buffett. Great, so we're going to need a variety of different entrepreneurs and really use them as a model. And hopefully they're exhibiting specific behaviors that you want to exhibit. All right, so we're moving on. Moving to section four on your sheet. Moving to section four on the sheet. And in section four, I'd like you to list three adjectives. List three adjectives you want people to use to describe your communication style. List three adjectives you want people to use to describe your communication style. And this is in an ideal, dreamlike world. You need to write at least three, but you must write three. I need three for the next exercise. Okay, we have three. All right, we're moving on. So again, in terms of style, we still need to be clear, concise, and compelling. So clear, we want to make sure that your nonverbals are not competing with what you're saying. Concise, we want to make sure that there are no non-fluencies, um, ah, or filler words like you know or like. And compelling, we need to make sure that you have an engaging communication style. So we're looking for the three C's. So we're going to do a little exercise called on the spot. Can I get a volunteer to help me with this? Somebody who hasn't participated yet. Great, hop on up here and bring that sheet with that you've been completing the entire workshop with you. You have that sheet? Um, remind me of your name again? Milton. What Milton's gonna do is he's going to do a 60 second pitch about his venture. 
I know, well I've learned, over the multiple times I've done this seminar, I've learned not to warn people that they're going to do the pitch. So what Milton's going to do is he's going to give his pitch, and you can stand right front and center, and I'll take those for you. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make sure that Milton, um, we're going to be giving Milton feedback in terms of his strengths and his development opportunities, very much like what you did at the beginning of the seminar. All right, you ready, Milton? Yes. Do you want with or, with, 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 uh, with or without the microphone? With the mic. The name of my company is Penelope's People. We are a caregiver replacement agency. We provide nannies, babysitters, companions, and housekeepers to help people make their life easier. Okay, great, great. All right. Yay! Yeah. So what adjectives would you use to describe Milton's communication style? Clear. Clear. Concise. Concise. Compelling. Compelling. <laughs> <laughs> Done. What other adjectives would you use besides the three C's? Straightforward. Confident. And remember these, straightforward, confident. What words do you think um, were on Milton's list? And I can't read your writing, Milton. <laughs> no. Clear, thoughtful, and I can't read that last one. Okay, thoughtful. Thoughtful, trust, and confidence. Thoughtful, trust, and confidence. Which word do you think Milton needs to work on? Confidence. Why would you say confidence? So he's providing a service he needs to be perceived as trustworthy. What could Milton do to be perceived as confident and trustworthy? How could he manipulate his style to be perceived the way he wants to be perceived? I don't know if it's a direct answer, but what I was thinking in my mind is there's, I don't know if you're trying to convince me that I need the product, because I think if you need this product, you don't have to convince me that I need this product. If I need one of these services, somebody's going to tell me, or it's going to be obvious, you have to tell me why I need it provided by you. Right. Well, I'm trying to exude trust and confidence yes. so that people would want to use my service because I vet these people, I interview them, I do reference checks, I do background checks. I thoroughly analyze who these people are so that it's a yeah. matching process. So do we want him to talk more that? about his credentials and qualifications? Yeah. So that would help. What about in terms of his style? What could he do to be perceived as trustworthy and to build trust? I was going to say that as far as the style, I, mean, I think it came off really well. It was personable. He wasn't trying to pitch me on anything. Like, come on, we did, you know, it, was, it, was, it was all quite the only thing I would, I would possibly do. So you like that he wasn't too pushy? He wasn't pushing, he was relaxed, I feel like he told him to talk to him, approach him, and it wasn't like a sales thing, it was, um, it was, it was open, you know, it wasn't like he was like, I have a service, it's here for you, you know, like, like what you want, you get those things with the, um, you are supporting, babies are supporting in some way, caregivers are supporting support them. But I think the one thing I would say is maybe, um, uh, he stressed what they can do for you, but maybe not so much about um, what they're doing for the, for the person who's being taken care of. So it's like it's taking time off the mother's hands to care of the baby, but it's not like this person's a um, you know, trained nurse who has daycare home. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Exactly. Let me give you one strategy, Milton, especially since you're dealing with such a sensitive venture. Um, let me take those papers back. What I'd like you to do is when you come to, let's say you're presenting actually a large room, I'd like you to first stand front and center, closest to the audience as possible, especially because it's such a sensitive, and right there, he's controlled the room. And what I want you to do is I want you to pick out one person, I want you to think of this entire room not as 100 plus people, I want you to think of it as three. One over here in this sort of cluster, one over here in the middle cluster, and one over here in this cluster. And I want you to really make eye contact with them and smile and so exude that warmth. Because if you make eye contact with one person over here, everyone in this area will feel like you're making eye contact with them and building rapport. And it's the same thing over here. You're building rapport with this group, 
massively across that cluster. So that's one suggestion I would give for you. Let's give appreciation again to Milton. Thank you. All right, can I get another volunteer to pitch their venture? Who wants to pitch their venture and get on the spot feedback? Great, hop on up here. Remind me of your name again? Mike. Mike. All right, I'm going to have you put your stuff down. Actually, let me grab it from you. Okay. Um, great, and away we go. We seek to pro uh, provide. Actually, do you want the microphone? Uh, no, that's okay. Can everyone hear Mike okay? Great. We seek to um, service private equity funds with tax and administrative services. It's going to be personal service, it's going to be hand on, hands on service, and we will be responsible and we will own your back office and administration. What adjectives would you use to describe Mike's communication style? What words would you use to describe Mike's communication style? Oh, but an adjective. I just be emotional, actually. Emotional? Yeah. Sincere. I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so not necessarily clear or concise. Again, we said we're going to give the kind truth. Thank you, Hillary. <laughs> Why would you say aggressive? So it suits the venture. Here are the words that Mike wrote on his list. Trust, which makes sense with his venture. Confident and convincing. Did he achieve those three objectives? So you wanted some reassurance that he was the right person for you. You believed in his expertise and his credibility, but you weren't sure if you would be his client. Correct. So, do you normally talk to people who understand your language or don't understand the jargon? So that makes sense for your business. I saw him back there. To piggyback off of what she was saying with regards to uh, your message, by the way you're talking, it's like you don't have this established yet, it's not happening, and maybe that is the case. So I guess for me, I'd want to hear that this is what you are doing, like it's present, present tense, everything, instead of seeking or will, going to, I'd rather hear more so, this is what we do, this is what I'm doing, this is how we do it. So um, more simplified, right. broken down version. All right, appreciation again for Mike. One more volunteer. One more volunteer. This is your opportunity to pitch your venture. To free publicity, you can't beat that. All right, hop on up here. I'm assuming you don't want the microphone. Do you uh, want the microphone? No. Okay. Remind us of your name again. Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas. My father gets told package energy shop. Uh, package energy. All right, what adjectives would you use to describe Jay's presentation style? Informative. Informative? Precise and clear. You knew exactly what he was talking about. It's not a complicated. Others. Convincing. Or convinced and convincing. If he's convinced in his product, you should be too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it too pushy though? Is he come, does he come across as too pushy? Say drink this now. So just the right amount. 
<laughs> it wasn't casual? Yeah, it's smile, you want him to smile a little bit? A little bit, but both sit back. Well, yeah, I sort of agree with that. He's a little bit detached. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not, it's not, I don't know about JT, but Jay Thomas, I just know about your product, so you, you, you sort of let him stand on his own. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that could be a good thing. He seemed a little jittery. It was almost like he drank too much of his <laughs> You come across as very warm and friendly, right? Yes. So, where, is this your list over here? Where's your list? I didn't do the list. You didn't do the list. So, what <laughs> three adjectives did you write in your mind that you wanted to be used to people? What? Exceptional. Exceptional? I want two more. Exceptional? I'm putting you on the spot. It's going on the spot. <laughs> what are the benefits? Right, we're listening to the adjectives. What adjectives? So, exceptional. Um, that you can produce? Maybe. Uh, Patriotic? Yes. I'm going to throw out one more for you, and I want it to be grounded. Because I can tell you're very serious, you're very motivated to sell this product. But I want you to ground your presentation style. So again, I'm going to have you walk to the center of the room and channel that energy into your message. So put your hands at your side, at your side. So you don't have to do anything because you deliver the message so well. You heard that from the audience. You don't need to have any distracting nonverbals. Again, we're clear, concise, and compelling. And it's not clear because your nonverbals are distracting from your message. So I want you to not do anything with your nonverbals, your hands, shifting of the feet. And I want you to focus that energy into communicating your message. So that's what I want you to do during this uh, this next session. All right, appreciate you again for Jay. So you showed us the sample. Is the um, sample on the market yet? Absolutely. It is, and where can we purchase it? Uh, Delta contestants, uh, <coughs> gas stations. Uh, Where's the nearest so one around here that we could purchase your product? Right across the street? 80th and 2nd Avenue. 80th and 2nd Avenue, all right. So now it's time to do your second pitch. You've polished the substance of your pitch. You've identified the adjectives you want people to use to describe your communication style. And what you can do is you can communicate the way you want to be perceived. You can change your communication behavior. It's completely within your control. So communicate the way you want to be perceived. So as you're hearing this feedback during this take two round, I want you to hear what people are describing you the way you want to be described. Are they using those adjectives or a variation of them? So here's what we're going to do. Find someone you don't know and introduce yourself. Decide you will be partner A and partner B. Good. Partner A will pitch their new venture to partner B. You have 60 seconds. What I want you to do, partner B will tell partner A descriptive feedback. One thing they did well and one thing they can do differently. And I want you to use what we've learned so far to frame your feedback. So the three C's, clear, concise, and compelling. Um, did they open with a very strong sentence that described um, extremely well their business? And did they have a tagline at the end? And how did they come across in terms of their style. So one thing they did well and one thing they could do differently. Partner B this round will pitch their new venture to partner A. Again, you'll play the role of the venture capitalist. So partner B is going to pitch to partner A. You have 60 seconds starting now. Partner A will tell partner B one thing they did well and one thing they could do differently. As you receive the feedback, think about did others perceive you the way you perceive yourself? If so, great, you're on the right track. If not, what changes do you want to make in terms of your communication style? You've thought about that famous entrepreneur that you'd like to model in terms of their style, and you've thought about your three adjectives in terms of how you want to be perceived. So what do you need to change to be perceived the way you want to be perceived? So moving on to number five on the sheet. We've reached the end. With a partner, discuss the following question. What one change will make 
will you make to reframe how others perceive you? So today we focused on two core areas. First, we refined the substance of your pitch. So first, we re re redefined and defined and sharpened the substance of your pitch. And second, we focused on the style and how can you be more effective in delivering your pitch. Again, this is just scratching the surface. If you're currently in the MBA program, I encourage you to take a look at the courses offered in the communication discipline and sign up for uh, one of those. Um, next semester, I'll be teaching communication for entrepreneurs, and we go um, into uh, much more depth in terms of this content. So thank you so much for your active participation, and hopefully today was helpful in terms of refining the substance of your pitch and the style of your pitch. Have a great evening, and get home safely.